An important part of the work covered in chapter 2 and 3 is around being able to do the at acquisition consolidation journal entry. I'm now going to do a few examples including amounts. They are different from what's in the textbook and I'll use these to illustrate some of the principles. So I have a scenario here where P, my parent, obtained a 100% controlling interest in S and paid 85,000 Rand. So my consideration of the investment, the cost of the investment is 85,000 Rand paid by the parent. The equity of S at acquisition date consists of ordinary share capital of 80,000 Rand and retained earnings of 5,000 Rand. Let's do the at acquisition consolidation journal entry. Immediately you can see it's a wholly owned subsidiary so I do not expect any non-controlling interests. So straightforward, I have the equity of S at acquisition date that I eliminate against the common item, the investment, coming from the separate financial statements of P, which I now credit. And because the consideration that P was willing to pay for this 100% interest is equal to his 100% proportionate share of the 85,000 at acquisition date, we do not have any goodwill or gain from bargain purchase. How would the at acquisition journal entry now change if we assume that P paid a hundred thousand rand for this hundred percent interest as opposed to eighty five thousand rand? So I'm changing the scenario. When you now do the consolidation journal entry, the at acquisition, you will again eliminate the equity of S at acquisition date, debit share capital, debit retained earnings with the 85,000. That eliminates against the common item, the investment of now a 100,000 rand. So that is a change to this example. And suddenly you see that I now need a balancing entry, which is my goodwill. But it's important that you understand what goodwill is in this scenario. To determine your goodwill or gain from bargain purchase, you need to compare the total net assets of the subsidiary, which is represented by the total equity at acquisition date, and compare that to what the parent is willing to pay for his interest in that net assets. And this is now a 100% interest by P, and P is willing to pay a hundred thousand rand for his hundred percent proportionate share of eighty-five thousand rand. So the parent is willing to pay fifteen thousand rand more for this investment than what the net asset is worth of this subsidiary. And that net asset is an indicator of the value of that business. And if the parent is willing to pay more than his proportionate share of that net assets value, you end up with goodwill. And goodwill is recognized as a debit, it's recognized as an asset, it is a future economic benefit that the parent expects from this business combination. Let's have a look at this example. If we assume that the parent was willing to pay 80,000 Rand for his 100% controlling interest in the net assets of the subsidiary represented by the 85,000 Rand at acquisition date. The first thing to mention here is that the equity of the subsidiary represented by the net assets of the subsidiary at acquisition date must be measured at fair value because that net asset value represented by the equity at acquisition date must be the fair value of that business at acquisition date. And if you then compare what the parent is willing to pay for his proportionate share of that net asset value, then only can you conclude whether there's really a goodwill or a gain from bargain purchase. 
In this example, comparing the 80,000 to 100% of the 85,000, we conclude that there is a gain from bargain purchase in this group's consolidation. Now, this gain from bargain purchase can be because the seller was acting under a compulsion of a forced sale, or there can be other reasons why the parent believes that his investment in this net assets of 85,000 Rand should be less than the actual fair value thereof. But as long as the net assets have been fairly valued at acquisition date, you can conclude that there is a gain from bargain purchase. And please note that the gain from bargain purchase is recognized in the year of acquisition through profit and loss. How would this journal entry where we recognize the gain from bargain purchase change in your since acquisition periods? And why am I talking about the since acquisition periods now? Remember, you have to repeat all your consolidation journal entries every single year because your starting point every single year of the consolidation process will be the separate financial statements of B and S. And included in those separate financial statements of B and S will be the share capital of S, the investment in S in the separates of B, so every year you have to eliminate these common items. So every year when you eliminate these common items, you'll end up with this credit entry, which relates to the gain from bargain purchase. In the year of acquisition, the first year, that gain went to profit and loss. But remember in all subsequent periods, when you do this at acquisition elimination journal entry, your gain from bargain purchase has now moved to the retained earnings opening balance of the group. It's like any other profit and loss item. In the year of the profit or loss, it's recognized through profit and loss, but it closes off to retained earnings. So you can see that it's moved in subsequent periods to your opening retained earnings.